So today, we're happy to have Jiza Yu from IAS uh, give an introduction to affine Grassmannians and the geometric Satake equivalence. Okay, thank you for the introduction. So uh, today, I'm going to talk about affine Grassmannian and the geometric Satake equivalence in mixed uh, in equal characteristic case. So the goal is to give a very quick introduction to the geometry of affine Grassmannian, and I want to state the geometric Satake equivalence and the survey some of its basic properties. So let's start by um, uh, introducing some notations. So throughout the talk, K will be a field. And O is K double bracket T, while F will be the fraction field of O, which is K double parenthesis T. And I assume G to be a split connected reductive group over K. And I also want to fix the choice of the maximum Horus and the Borel subgroup uh, inside G. OK. So now I'm going to define what is an uh, affine Grassmannian. So there are usually two very commonly used interpretations of affine Grassmannian. So the first one is we can think of it as a homogeneous space. So we define two um, pre sheaves uh, which I denote by LG and L plus G on the category of affine K algebras. Um, that. Um, so these two free shapes are defined by LGFR is G of R double parenthesis of T. So this is sometimes called the loop space of G. And L plus GFR, this is defined to be G of R of double bracket of T. So sometimes it causes the formal jet space. Then the affine Grassmannian group G is defined to be the FPQC quotient um, of, F, of LG quotient L plus G. OK. So from this definition, we see that we have an L plus reaction on group G just by multiplication. OK, so this is the first definition. Um, okay, maybe I just. Okay. We can also define it as uh, in terms of a modeling. Can, can we get the black, the back, the, the oh, black board up? I see. I see what you mean. Uh, is this? Oh. Uh, I need to print it. It's operation is done from you. Yeah. OK, is this nice? OK. So we have, we can also define this moduli uh, problem. So we define this functor group D again on this upon K algebras to some set. And uh, group G of R is the set of pairs E beta. So where this E is the principal G bundle or G twister over B of R, which is back of R double bracket T. And beta is an isomorphism between E restricted to the DR cross, which is the formal counter unit disk. This is spec of R double parenthesis of T to the trivial G closer. Um, this counter formal unit disk. We call that isomorphism. So we have given two interpretations of Alcomer Spanish. And in particular, it 
if G is the GLN, we have a third equivalent definition. So per GLN bar is the set of lattices inside our double premises T of N, which I will denote this by lambda zero. Uh, no, sorry, this is not really lambda zero, that's fine. Sorry. So um, lambda is a lattice. By saying it's a lattice, I really mean, first of all, lambda is a finitely generated projective R double bracketing module. And secondly, there is an isomorphism between lambda tensor with R double premises T over R double bracket T and this R double premises Tn. Okay, so it will be a fun exercise to see why this lattice inter interpretation corresponds with this homogeneous interpretation and also this modular problem. Okay. Now maybe we should look at, we, we, we want to take a, a closer look at the modular interpretation of our finite manual. So theorem. So, so this factor for G is representable by an in projective scheme. So the proof of this theorem is pretty, it's already pretty involved in the equal characteristic case. And in a mixed characteristic case, this is actually a very celebrated theorem of Bart and Schwarzer. So um, there's really no time for me to uh, give you a complete proof of this theorem. But I think it's, it's better to sort of give a sketch of the theorem, which shadows some lights on the structure of our numbers many. So I'll give a very sketch, uh, a very sketchy proof. What do you mean by local characteristic versus? Oh, I basically mean this. In this case, my G is over equal characteristic local ring, and uh, uh, there's but, only one ring, right? I only see one field right now. There's no coefficients. Yeah. Right. There's no. But I mean, for for mixed characteristic, I really mean G over ZP, for example. G is equal to yeah. Sorry for confusing. I shouldn't mention too much about mixed characteristic. Let's stay with equal characteristics in this talk. Okay. So um, we first make an observation. Um, so maybe just for G equals to GLN. Okay. So we use a lattice interpretation for any lattice lambda in GER GLN. Maybe R. We can always find a large enough positive member. Such that this lattice sits inside T n lambda zero, where this lambda where this lambda zero is defined to be this standard lattice R double bracket T n and this T minus n of uh, lambda zero. So I will define a factor for capital N whose R points are all this lattice lambda satisfies this inclusion relation. So it's not hard to see that GER GLN is just a co-limit of this GER N. And it suffices for us to understand this step function. So now, for any lambda in this GER big N, we consider this quotient lambda maps to T minus N from the zero of quotient lambda. I claim this defines a 
say natural transformation um, from this GER N to another functor GER NF. So where this GER NF is defined to be um, all the R double bracket T um, quotient, oh, sorry, uh, in, uh, projective, so, uh, sorry, right, let me phrase this. So this is R double bracket T quotient of T minus N from the zero quotient T N lambda zero, which is projective as an R model. Okay. So the proof of this lemma is kind of a technical, which I really don't have time to sketch. But if you believe in this lemma, then we have already have a very good understanding of this functor GER N. This is because this GER N of F is sits in this gross manual variety GER um, R to N big N. And we can see this is really close to embedding because the multiplication by T uh, acts as a new potent linear operator, so this is really closed condition. We see this is a closed embedding from here to the cross manual variety, and this basically proves that the functor GER G is GER GLN is representable by an in projective scheme. So we first look at the connected components of Alzheimer's money. So we know the pi zero of G equals to pi zero of LG equals to pi one of G. So in this way, we can calculate the number of connected components of GERG by calculating the algebraic fundamental group of the reductive group G. So in the case, um, G is a complex group, this theorem has an easier proof. So in this case, we know the alpha corresponding GERG is homomorphic to omega K. So this is the loop space of where k is um, a maximal complex subgroup. So this tells us that the pi zero of group g equals to pi zero of uh, omega of k equals to pi one of k equals to pi one of k. So I'm going to talk about some extra symmetry in this section. I want to uh, mention for experts, um, we're going to discuss what is the rotation torus action on Alzheimer's mania. And uh, there is no direct analog of this action in mixed characters. Okay, I shouldn't mention mixed characters anymore. Okay, let's stay with the characters. So um, let's consider this group out of B of R. So this is basically the automorphisms of 
our double bracket T. A complete description of this group is not really easy for general ring R, but we see there is an embedding of GM in this morphism. This is basically by, for any gamma in GM, um, this maps to the automorphism, which sends f of t to f of gamma of t. So this is just we really scale uh, this uniformizer t. Okay. And we usually call this GM action the rotation for section. So given gamma in this rotation torus, how does it act on the Fengers manion? If you use the modular interpretation, so gamma acts on pair E beta, it's just the gamma pullback of this E and pullback of this beta. So in terms of G equals to G of N in terms of lattice, so this gamma action acts on this lambda, just basically by way twist, this lattice by uh, this automorphism gamma of our double bracket. And it is very clear to see the new gamma dot lambda is again a lattice. So by definition, an uh, Alpha Manion is an infinite dimensional space. It's very complicated. But nicely, we have a good uh, series of spaces which are finite dimensional and forms its replication of this space. So again, we uh, appeal to this modular interpretation. So let's say we have E1 and E2, E2 G twisters um, over over uh, DFR, and if we restrict to DR cross, and we have an isomorphism between them, we can first trivialize this E1 over the entire formal unit disk. And this gives us, let's say the trivialization is uh, F1, this gives us trim E1 cross, and here, this trivialization gives us another trivial twister, E trim over DR cross. And this induces a morphism uh, between two trivial G twisters over the puncture from the unit disk. So this is uh, two feet uh, of numbers. Now, this belongs to the morphism of trivial twister <coughs> over the R cross which is G of our double analysis T. And the choices of phi one and phi two amounts to two elements in girl of our double bracket T. So now we see this phi two phi, phi one universe really corresponds to some element which I developed by N of phi in the double quotient space G R double bracket T. G R double premises T and quotient G R double bracket T. And we know from the Cartan decomposition theorem, this is identified as the set of dominant co characters of T. So now I can define the Schubert variety and the Schubert cell. So I define the Schubert variety for Schubert cell for mu to be out of, out of points E beta in the Alpha Gasmanian. Whose relative precision is 
equal to mu. And we define the sugar variety where less or equal to mu to be those points whose relative precision is less than or equal to mu. Okay. So it turns out that these two spaces are really nice. So in fact, the sugar variety per mu is the L plus mu orbit of the point, which I you know by T of mu. So this is in fact the image of GM goes to T using this mu and in fact in T, and we consider the image as a point in group T. So it is smooth. And uh, dimension to row. And secondly, this GUR that's equal to mu is the risk equals. And it equals. So the union of all the supercell where nu, where nu is less than or equal to mu. Okay. So maybe let's look at some counter examples of the supercells and super varieties. So we'll first look at the case G equals to GL2. So what is GER00? Zero zero? So this is just a point. We can trivial this is from maybe the lattice. I don't know, there are many ways of seeing this. For example, if you see it from the lattice description, we're just looking at the lattice, which are bounded by this trivial lattice. So we have just only one trivial choice. So from this argument, we also see for any girl in N, this is a gamma point. Okay. Now how about girl one zero? I claim this is P1. Um, we can also see this P1 from the lattice description of the Alphanger's Vanier. But I want to give a slightly different perspective. So we can think of this sugar cell, in this case, which is also sugar variety, as the L plus G orbit of T10. So GER10 as an L plus G orbit, this is isomorphic to L plus G, L2, quotient. L plus GL2 intersect with T10, L plus GL2, T minus 10, and this is isomorphic to L plus GL2 quotient. Uh, so this matrix uh, takes a form like O cross, and there's a T, O, O, and O cross. So do some calculation, we see this is really P1. Okay. So a slightly non trivial example will be. Uh, okay, let me just shift the board first. So let's look at GER less than or equal to, to zero. Okay. So in terms of lattices, this is just a set of lattices, lambda inside lambda zero, such that the dimension of lambda zero, which is lambda, equals to two. 
In order to understand this variety, we can look at a different thing, which I call GER um, 2 plus W zero. So this is, we have lambda, lambda prime and lambda zero. So basically, we insert a third lattice lambda prime in between lambda and lambda zero. So the successive quotient will both have dimension one. So the choice of lambda prime just basically amounts to a P1. And if we choose a lambda prime, then the choice of this lambda gives us another P1. So this is really a P1 bundle over P1. If we, I don't have much time, but if we do some more careful calculation, we see this is really uh, O of uh, uh, two. So this is the Hitzel Brook surface sigma 2. And uh, the picture of this per less than or equal to, to 0 will look like So the singular point is GER 1, 1. And everything else is GER 2, 0. And this GER um, 2 the less than or equal to, to 0 looks like this. So this is a natural projection, and we see for any point that is different from this GER 1, 1, we have a unique pre-image. And the pre-image of this point is the curve, which looks like this. Okay. I just want to let you know, Jesus, uh, it's 3.30 almost. Um, oh, yeah, let's take a break, sorry. Thank you for the reminder, yeah. Okay, so let's uh, um, meet back in uh, five minutes, 3.35 or so. Okay, so uh, let's talk about the opposite super varieties. So we define a Christian um, uh, minus G uh, on this category of alpha K algebras where L minus G of R is G of R T minus one. And we also define this L minus zero G. Um, again, um, this is L minus zero G. The L minus zero G of R is the kernel of uh, L minus G of R to G of R. So this is just a mod T minus one map. Okay. So the opposite super, super cell, the upper mu is defined to be L minus zero G times T of mu. And the greater than equal to mu is defined to be union of all the um, mu such that mu is greater than or equal to mu. So first of all, unlike the name suggests, this is this opposite sugar cell or opposite sugar variety are not real varieties because they are all infinite dimensional. So this is a smooth in projective variety in Gertie. Secondly, you know, third uh, of mu intersect square of mu is not zero, it's not empty, if and only if this mu is greater than or equal to mu. 
And in particular, GER upper mu intersects with GER lower mu. This is uh, isomorphic to G quotient P of mu. So this P of mu is a parabolic subgroup associated to mu. And if, uh, let's say, mu is um, less than nor or equal to mu, which means that this your upper mu intersect your lower mu is non is non trivial, uh, then for any lambda inside mu and mu, so your mu intersect your uh, mu intersects with GER lambda, this intersection is transversal in GER lambda. All right, so we have basically finished studying the geometry of Alphanger Spanian for now, and I'm going to move on to um, geometry is hockey equivalence. So by our discussion of the super variety and super cells, we know the L plus G action on super variety for less than or equal to mu really factors through a finite type quotient Ln of G. So there is this Ln of G is the pre sheaf whose R point is G of R T quotient T N. So it makes sense to define this category P L plus G equivalent perverse sheaf on GER less than or equal to mu. So first of all, this lambda will be the coefficient ring of the sheaf theory we consider. Now secondly, so what what is really is this uh, subscript L plus G? So this is so we, have, we should really define this equivariant perverse sheaf as the heart of the equivariant derived category. And I think this will be covered in the events Friday's talk. And for now, I will just give a very naive description of this category. So we have two actions um, from LNG cross GER less than or equal to mu to GER less than or equal to mu. So the first action is just the naive projection, and the second map is the action map. So the shape is equivalent perverse uh, is pulled back along these two morphisms are isomorphic. And we also require some um, post echo condition. So namely, we can add another copy of the LNG to here, and we have three arrows from there to here, and we require the pullback, respective pullbacks are isomorphic. Okay. So, in the Sahaki category, we shall denote by stat, G lambda is the entire, is the entire um, L plus G equivalent perverse sheaf on uh, Alphamer's Manion to be limit of all the equivalent perverse sheaves um, for less than or equal to mu. So by this very definition, we see the subhacky category is really an abelian category. But we should expect more structure um, of this category because the subhacky category is expected to categorify the superior hack algebra. So we really expect a, a monoidal structure on it. And actually, this is done uh, via loose convolution construction. So uh, we will explain this.
So first of all, we define this convolution cross magnet. So this is denoted by GER Q dot times GER G. We can define it as quotient LG times GER G, quotient by L plus G. So here, this L plus G acts on LG times GER G um, anti diagonal. So if you are more used to the modular interpretation, this is the set of uh, quadruples E1, E2, beta 1, beta 2, such that we have a chain of modifications. E1 is just with E1 across, oh, sorry, I mean this is E2, this is beta 2, and 1, E1 across, and beta 1, 2, 3. And it will be the it will be a fun and easy exercise to really write down uh, the convolution cross magnet definition in the case of G equal to GL and using lattices. Okay. So we see from the definition, so this convolution cross magnet admits a morphism to GER G, which I'll denote by M. So this map M basically sends in the first interpretation. G1, G2, to your multiplication, G1, G2. And in the second in the second interpretation, it sends E1, E2, beta 1, beta 2, to E2 and beta 1 com composes beta 2. Okay. So this morphism is really called the convolution morphism. So now how do we define a monoidal structure on the Sataki category, let's say we have two, um, let's say we have two perverse sheaves um, in the Sataki category, which are F and G. So on G cross G, we can form their exterior tensor product, F box tensor is P. And here we have a naive, we have a natural projection from LG cross G. And we have another projection to their G convolve with their G. And finally, we have this convolution morphism to their G. So now I claim there exists a unique sheaf, which I denote by F Q dot box tensor with G, um, which is L plus G squared equivalent perverse sheaf on the convolution graph manion, such that the pullback of this sheaf along Q So this is isomorphic to the pullback of zero's perverse cohomology of box tensor G. And then the convolution of F and G is defined to be the derivative straight pushover of this F to the box G. So the amazing proposition is the resulting sheaf is again perverse. So this is called the miracle property of the Sadaki category by Bernice and Junfeld. Uh, okay, so now we have successfully uh, uh, installed the Sadaki category with a monoidal structure. So now we are ready to state the geometric Sataki equivalence. So this is due to um, uh, Lustig, Ginsburg, 
Bring in some Pluto. And Mercury's Villain. So the theorem says that this functor H star from the Satake category to the category of finally generated lambda modules naturally lifts to an equivalence of symmetric monoidal categories. Category and the category of representations of the Lorentz degree. So the geometric Sataki equivalence um, can be seen as a dictionary uh, that links the topological world and the representation theoretical world. So to illustrate this, let's look at the following proposition. So the simple objects, which are the IC sheaves in the Sataki category, so I sh should mention this IC mu really supports um, uh, the super wide girl lesson equal to mu. And this is set to V mu, which is the irreducible representation of G check uh, of high slate. Secondly, so there exists a set of functors f of mu from the Sataki category to the category of finally generated lambda modules such that the direct sum of f mu, where mu is labeled by other co characters instead of dominant co characters, so this is isomorphic to the forgetful functor from the category of representations of G check to the category of finally gener generated lambda modules composed by the Sataki equivalence. Okay. Uh, question? Yeah. So, uh, is lambda a ring or is it a field? Uh, it can be a ring. For example, uh, it can be Z if we consider a complex group. It can be Z. This is in the work of a Mark Yeah, but. In order to avoid uh, ambiguity, let's assume lambda is is a field of characteristic zero. Well, for because for a ring, I'm not so sure what is an irreducible representation with highest weight. Uh -huh. uh, maybe it's just me, me again being stupid. No, um, no you can, you can, if, it, if it is a ring, you can still define like it. Okay, maybe, maybe we can talk about this later, I think, because uh, uh, I don't have uh, much time left. Uh, let me just finish this uh, proposition first. So I'm going to define this set of functors at new later, but what it really does is it takes you call it G, it takes a sheaf in a Satake category to the new wave space of the corresponding representation of G tag. Okay. And H star of the perverse uh, star push forward of this shifting by two rho of mu, where this lambda is the constant shift on curve mu. This is 
So the shorter module of uh, mu is just defined to be each time sub. Okay. And for another standard sheet, which is a curves with a strict push forward, this. This is isomorphic to the final module. So now uh, I'm going to very briefly explain what is this functor um, f of nu. Consider a jam action, which is different from the rotarian torus action that we defined before. So we use two row check of uh, two row check to transfer this jam to T. So here this row check is a half of the positive current. And uh, this is in G. And in this way, we have an action which should be given by two row check GM um, X under G. And under this GM action, this S of the stable loci will be of the form T of mu, where mu is cofactor T. And S of mu is really the tracking loci. So which are the points now from the standard group G, such that limits of the T equals at zero, um, for row check of T is X equals T of mu. And the repelling loop pi will be mu. This is T of mu. Uh, uh, G. So if T goes to infinity, so to uh, check T and X. S of mu is the orbit of T of mu under alpha u where u is the unicorn radical v and the T of mu is the orbit of alpha u opposite. Okay. So alpha S of mu intersect with the sure variety curve less or equal to mu is not empty if mu is T mu is containing curve less than or equal to mu. And if this is the case, the dimension, so it's this intersection is pure of the 
dimension, rho times rho paradox in the cross okay. And secondly, uh, I, I just erased that part. So, uh, The new, the new space of the Schur module is canonically identified with the new space of Val module, and they admit a natural set of bases, which is given by all the irreducible components of uh, third alternative to mu intersect with S of mu. So this space is, is called Merkwage Vilona. Right, I, uh, I have just finished my talk and I thank you for your time and attention. May I ask a general question? Yeah, sure. Uh, is it possible that uh, there are some nodes? Yes. Uh, so I think uh, Pierre Bauman and Simon Rich has have a very um, comprehensive set of nodes, and okay. also uh, my advisor Simon Zhu has another nicely written set of notes. Um, so both nodes are available online. So, uh, but I rather meant nodes for this talk. So, pardon me. I rather meant nodes for this particular talk. Ah, uh -huh, I see. Because you know, I'm I think I'm getting older, but it's a bit hard for me to understand stuff delivered at this speed. No, no, it's it's, it's just because I I was trying to squeeze. A lot of stuff in one talk, so one hour is really um, insufficient to understand the geometry stack equivalence. I'm I'm just really rushing all the way. Uh, this was noticeable. <laughs> Could I just ask a slightly different talk? So, I, I, so I mean, you gave these three. I'm just kind of curious. So, I mean, I know there are these three different definitions of the. Uh, of the Affine Grassmannian. Yes. I mean, so in the proof of the geometric Sataki equivalence, like how much are you using these three different interpretations? Or is it that you have a preference for one over the others when you're doing the proof of this result? Uh, I think actually, I'll, so actually, uh, the homogeneous interpretation and the modular interpretation are both used in the proof of the geometric Sataki equivalence. For example, in order to uh, construct, for example, the commutativity constraint, we actually go through uh, go to the so-called Bayesian Driffield Grassmannian. So this is basically defined as some global Grassmannian over uh, product of copies of curves. So this is defined by modular interpretation, and uh, um, there is also a. Uh, a way of constructing the monoidal structure of this H star functor using the equivariant cohomology, L plus the equivariant cohomology. So I would say both interpretations are used in the proof of uh, geometric Sataki equivalence. And because we will not use the Benes and Drifa Grassmannian for understanding uh, Bizarkov, Nikov, and Finkover's uh, paper on the Rev Sataki, so I just totally omit this beautiful topic. I also have Thanks. I, I prefer the another version of the affine Grassmannian where you just use the Katz Moody group for the affine group and mod up by a parabolic. Ah, uh, that's nice. That's yeah. also useful for understanding the convolution and so forth. Definitely, yes. Can I can I ask you a question? So um, so there is no uh, easy or known way to uh, uh, make the group act uh, on the cohomology, so you have to go through uh, um, uh, just yeah 
just a you know, data car type uh, uh, argument. Uh, but is it, is it true that you can, there are still, um, you can have a principal SL2 acting or is that, that's an, you can explicitly, uh, you can give explicit uh, endomorphisms or is there something like that? Is that correct? Uh, uh, I think there's actually an SL2 action on the, the cohomology of uh, the entire alphanous menu, but that's not, that's kind of a beyond the scope of today's talk. And for general, so we are to wrestle to the group. Right, right. I mean, I mean so yeah, let's say you have a complex numbers and uh, you do set a key for a general group and inside your, uh, I mean, you have a module for your Lie group, for your group. So you have a, an action of the Lie algebra. Right. And isn't there somewhere in, uh, I don't know if it's in uh, Ginsburg's paper or somewhere, a construction of the action of the principal E or something like that? Uh, right, I think that's in Ginsburg's paper. Yeah, yeah that's, that's in Ginsburg's paper. So, so, yeah. so yeah, in fact, so, so the, the action of the principal SL2 uh, uh, gives us some very interesting structure on, yeah, on, on, the, yeah, on these functions. Yeah. Has, it, has it been, what, what, what is known? I mean, has there been more work since Ginsburg on, on that principal SL2? Sorry? Uh? Yeah, uh, so uh, can you repeat your question? So since, since Ginsburg, uh, so Ginsburg, uh, Ginsburg mentions that, uh, uh, I don't know, 20 years ago, I forget when that was, uh, more probably, has, has there been uh, work uh, uh, in uh, understanding better what's going on with this principle SL2 action? And, and Ginsburg probably was working in an analytic setting. I mean, has it been done in a, is there some kind of algebraic counterpart to that? Uh, right, I think there's a paper by Zhu uh, Wei Yun and Ximun Zhu uh, studying the integral coefficient homology of the uh, loop cross menu. And they give a slightly, um, they give, a, give, they give a, a new interpretation of uh, this principle as L2 thing. So, Okay, so what, what, what are the, who are the authors? Can you repeat that? Uh, uh, so Zhu Wei Yun and uh, Xin Wen Zhu, they're joint paper on integral coefficient homology. Thank you. Raphael, maybe it's just worth saying, so if we look at the um, centralizer of a principal nilpotent element, um, this is a commutative ring and this is isomorphic to the equivariant cohomology of that van Grassmannian, and the action is what you expect. Okay, okay, so you're really doing more than what I was asking for the action of E, but you're saying actually one can describe much more and that's by identifying the, okay, well, that totally. Oh, yeah. wait, so Jody, uh, uh, I think the, so, so the distribution algebra of the, uh, uh, Oh, sorry. No, no. Yeah. yeah, so there's lots of technicalities with yeah. small characteristic and things like this, but I'm just saying this is the general picture. Um, we have the centralizer of a regular nilpotent element, which acts, and this is the action of the equivariant uh, of the cohomology ring. Yes. And just one more thing based on Raphael's point. Um, so there is this old paper of Eric Vassereau where he explains how to get the whole Lie algebra action by hyperbolic localization to all of the root SL2s. So for, yes. for every simple for every simple root, you can do a hyperbolic localization to the affine Grassmannian of SL2. And there you have the action of the kind of principal SL2 for that root subgroup, which is now just a simple root generator. Um, and then what he says is we can get the Fs by applying hard left shits. So is that, is that uh, uh, similar to what uh, uh, Braverman, Finkelberg, Nakajima have done for, for their Coulomb branches? Uh, probably probably is, uh, what they've done, maybe a generalization of that uh, when they they construct actions using uh, hyperbolic localization uh, in their more recent work. Uh, maybe that's what, that's what their interaction. Uh. 
Uh, Rafael, uh, maybe I've just provided uh, a link to an archive paper which does something along those lines. Thank you. And maybe we can just clarify, so come back to Vanya's question. So, of course, so simple module makes, doesn't make sense over a ring. So for that part, you needed field, but everything else, everything else you wrote down makes sense over a ring. Uh, I have a question. So, so in the beginning, you assume uh, the defined grass man is uh, defined over K of field. So in the statement of uh, of, of uh, uh, the uh, syntactic correspondence, uh, so so k is still arbitrary or so. So pardon me. So, 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 so yeah. So 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 for uh, so for the statement of uh, the uh, syntactic uh, equivalence to be yeah. correct, so can uh, k and and lambda be both arbitrary or like? No, you, you actually, yeah, I, actually, I lied a little bit. So actually, actually, tensor is k bar. Uh, so you mean uh, uh, like k? Uh, so so uh, we should uh, consider a, a fine grass many over algebraically closed. Yeah. yeah. And then so in the uh, so in this case, lambda can be arbitrary. Uh, it's pretty arbitrary. Like it's some commutative Newtonian domain of finite global dimension. This is proved in. Mercury's and Bologna's paper. Thank you. Uh, yeah, but uh, in Mercury's and Bologna's paper, I believe the uh, theory of fine grass mania is over C. Yeah, yeah, it's over C, yes. Yeah, and but for, for k equals to k bar, in this case, for example, k goes to f, f q bar, then I'm really talking about the QL bar coefficient. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, okay. I was a little bit messy about the coefficient, uh, coefficient ring. <laughs> Uh, yes. Yeah, so, 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 yeah. If we take k to to be uh, like uh, f f p bar, then uh, so uh, it's the general statement for an arbitrary ring or not not ring, something like that, still correct? No. The, 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 then how do you how do you define the z coefficient perverse sheet? I have no idea. <laughs> right. I I, I that's I, I don't think so because in that case yeah, we. Yeah. So, so if uh, so, if k is not c, then, then we need more. Uh, yeah, we need more assumptions on lambda. Yeah. Like for example, we can take f l where l uh, is not does not equal to p something like that. Of course, yeah. yeah. More questions. Okay, if not, let's thank the speaker again. So I wrote it in the chat, but just um, in case someone missed it, there will be a talk by um, Lin Wan Yu on Friday at 4 p.m., um, which will be um, reminders about the equivariant derived category because we will need.